All right, so we're going to talk about uh, SK label nodes today and um, mostly just about breaking up text into uh, multiple lines. And uh, we'll go with the, some new methods and also uh, just a, kind of an old one that uh, in some sense to me, you know, the code for this is a little bit like watching somebody play chess. You, you can see it. You might not exactly know what's going on, but then uh, I'll let you guys you know, kind, of, kind of work with me as we figure out how it does its magic. But first, let's talk about the, the easier way of doing this. If you are gonna just target iOS 11, uh, what you can do then is, is just work only with these uh, our, our fancy new properties, and we'll add them down here in just a moment for label two. As you can see right now, we've got two labels, one and two, right? And uh, what you see is what you get over here. It's just putting the first one over here with I'm label one, I'm label two, and otherwise this code is just identical. Um, but uh, they they are they're just one line each, okay? Uh, now in in pre iOS 11 days, an SK label node could actually not have uh, multiple lines. Uh, so let's make that switch right now. We'll just pick on uh, label two for this. So let's right over here, label two, and first thing we'll put in is line break mode, uh, and then we're gonna just say this is gonna be equal. So it's kind of a clunky line, a bit of code right here. NS line break dot by word wrapping there we go uh you know what you might even be able to get rid of this part of it a lot of times you can just do that let's try that let's see by by word wrapping yep looks like that's okay probably doesn't mind it all right so um <laughs> if you did want to see the front part you got it though uh and then the next thing we're going to do is actually specify the number of lines uh so we've got number of lines is going to equal uh and then let's just um let's just put in there two for right now uh, I was going to look over here and just see if there was any, any notes on that. Nope, there's not. And then let's go over here and write uh, label two dot preferred max layout width. Let's put something like 500 over there for the, uh, the preferred width of this. Uh, and then one other thing you're probably going to want to do is set uh, the vertical alignment. So just um, if you just type in here a, a dot align, you'll notice that it, none of these options actually continue with align exactly, but it'll it'll base, it'll pick out you know probably what you're looking for over here. See how it just highlights align in the middle there. So a lot of times when I'm coding, I'll just kind of throw out a keyword that I think, hey, this is probably what it's called, uh, and you, you sort of land on uh, what you need. Uh, again, I'm gonna put in here equals and then dot, and we'll just see what we got over here. And uh, top is probably it. Okay, we want the alignment to be up at the top. Uh, otherwise, I think what the default is is it would center it. So what would end up happening here is uh, if we did have enough text to fill up more than one line, it would start kind of going, you know, center out, right? Uh, whereas what should happen now is we start seeing the text go down that way, right? Because it's aligned up at the top. So uh, let's just put in here some more dummy text. And that should be enough. Okay, so let's see if this works. And then... We'll, uh, if you're going to target something lower than iOS 11, uh, we'll do an alternate, uh, we'll write a function, a convenience function. Okay, so obviously this is working for us here. Uh, so let's do this. Let's take a, a step backwards. And we're not going to worry about putting in any of this fancy new code, although iOS 11 is obviously well on its way to getting adopted. <laughs> Sounds like it's at a orphanage right now okay so we're gonna come down here let me um, give us a little bit more space all right so I'm just gonna write uh, function and split text into fields okay that's the name of it that uh, this is of our choosing you can call it anything you want uh, and first off I'm gonna put in here the text which is gonna be um, our first parameter so that's gonna be a string type uh, and then I'm going to specify the labels that we're going to feed the text into. Okay, so the first label uh, is going to be, or I should say the, the first parameter here is going to be an SK label node. And throughout the function, we'll refer to that as our first label and then our second label. And we really only end up using that right at the very end once we've got our um, basically two sets of string to, to feed data into there. Okay, all right, once you've got that, um, to call this, right, uh, what we would do is we would just come over here and write uh, split text in the fields. And then now here's going to be your long bit of, of text. Uh, it would probably look a little bit silly to all write it in here, so let's just do something like this. We'll say let lat long text string right, and you can I mean if you want to do this right, there we go. Da, da, da. And then you can just start 
punch it in and stuff, right? Let's try to just pick up some other characters there. Okay, that should be enough. Uh, and then what we'll do is we'll, so instead of putting the text directly in there, we'll put the variable in there. And then we'll specify label one and label two, which are of course our only two labels, the ones that we were just working with a moment ago. And you know, by, by calling this and, and putting this text in here, you know, we're essentially undoing what's already gonna show up, you know, coded to show up in there. So let's, let's just go ahead and get rid of it anyway. Okay, now, now that we've called this function, we need to actually do something inside of here. And, um, you know, one thing you could check is you could write, uh, if the text does not equal this, right? Because if, if that's the case, um, not much to do, right? Uh, or my new kind of fate more preferred way of doing this is you could just see if the text equals this right over here, well, then just return out, okay? You're not gonna re really return anything, but you're just basically breaking out of doing the rest of what's down inside of here. Uh, and then that way, you know, we, we get the same effect, but we don't have to uh, kind of encapsulate all the rest of the code inside of these opening and closing brackets. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna say let, and then this is gonna be a variable max in one line, and that's gonna be the number of characters, or it's gonna represent the number of characters. Uh, that we want to see at the most in one line, and uh, let's let's do something like thirty. I probably only have about sixty characters up there anyway. And uh, then after you've established that, let's just write a little single character variable. Let's call it i, uh, and this is going to be an integer. It's going to equal zero to start off with. And if I remember the code right, <laughs> well. Uh, I guess I should have kind of re-looked at this myself. Uh, we'll we'll uh, increment that forward over time. All right, so now we're gonna create uh, uh, two string variables, uh, line one and line two. And uh, to start off, these will not have any value, but what we'll do is we will add to them in a for loop coming up. All right, uh, and then one more variable, use line two. This is gonna be a Boolean variable that's gonna equal false. And uh, over time, again, over time, or over our for loop iteration, at some point we'll switch that to being true and then we'll begin feeding the characters inside of here into that second variable, okay? So initially, all the, you know, like, like let's say this much is gonna go into here, and then at a point we go, okay, you know what, now you gotta start using line two, right? All right, so to do this, here we go. Here's the, here's the secret sauce, the secret Szechuan sauce. Four letter in the text dot characters, okay? And uh, basically that is gonna create a for loop that just loops through all the letters inside of there, one at a time, and just to keep ignoring all this stuff for right now. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna say if I is greater than our max in one line, okay? And keep in mind, down here in a little bit, we're gonna increment that this i upwards for every loop that it goes through of every char character in there. Uh, and then I wanna know one other thing here too. It, and if letter, I can't really remember why I had to put string in there, but we'll just go with it. If, uh, if our current letter equals a space, so we just, Basically note that it's a space, you just leave a little space in there and have this equal to that. Uh, that way we don't break a word in the middle, right? Okay, so as long as we're currently over the max in one line and we're looking at a space, okay? And those do count as a letter. Okay, so if that's the case, uh, we're gonna do one thing and that is gonna be use line two is gonna equal true. All right, so that's gonna switch to true at that point. Uh, and then outside of that, we're gonna say if use line two equals false. Okay, so now we're assuming basically we're back kind of in the beginning of all this text again. So if, if uh, use line two still equals false, right? Um, somewhat early in our iteration. Then we're gonna say, oops, that should be line one. Line one is gonna equal itself plus this letter right here, whatever letter we are at, okay? Uh, and then we just put in here else we're gonna use line two, okay? And pasting that in, line two, line two. Uh, and then after that, it's just a matter of incrementing forward or upward i, okay? So for every iteration, we increase uh, by one. And 
and that's obviously you see where that gets used, right? So at some point, this is going to equal over 30. Uh, and then after that uh, for loop, so down here, uh, oh, I'm sorry, actually, this is our closing bracket for the for loop. So after that, basically we fed both line one and line two with data. We're going to say that our first label dot text is going to equal line one and our second label dot text equals line two. And, and just keep in mind that when we called this by write it by you know by basically passing in label one into here, you know that that is temporarily the same thing as you know this guy right over here. Okay, so by just writing dot text, it's going to change uh, this text over here. And uh, let's go ahead and see what happens when we call it. Let's give it. Make sure you can see the whole function written there at once and. And sure enough, it looks like it's split it up into uh, two lines. And let's see, so the last part of my kind of gobbledygook, yep, there it is. That part right there shows up. And you can see that, uh, you know, probably I'd, I'd, I'd want to set this to be something maybe more like 34. Might not make much of a difference because it's going to depend on the spacing. Uh, but that would put it in there a little bit cleaner. Here, well, yeah, it didn't do anything. <laughs> Okay. All right. So that, uh, that does it. There you go. I'll take a little snapshot in your mind. And that's the old school way of splitting things up into multiple lines. But yes, again, if you're using iOS 11, this is the way to go about it. All right. I'll see you in the next video.